I am um, adding a soundtrack to an old presentation of 1999. Frequency asks questions. What is a systems approach and why is it a good thing to take one? And if systems engineering is about managing complexity, why does it seem so complicated itself? Let's look at some basic system ideas. One of the important things is how can you recognize a system? On the left you can see a whole bunch of entities that are connected. It's all tangled up. But you can uncluster them, or cluster them rather, and produce a product view where you can see tight functional binding between clusters and loose coupling between the clusters. Or you can look at that as a process with three chunks in the process and they're all interconnected. Instead of 16 tangled parts, we see three simple clusters, which are candidate systems. How to recognize a, a whole system? Whole systems self-sustain. Processes form a, a positive feedback loop. So the following is not a whole system because there's no feedback. However, If we add the feedback of make profit so that we can buy more parts, the whole thing now becomes a continuous process and there is a system. Formal system definition. An open set of complementary interacting parts with properties, capabilities and behaviours emerging both from the parts and from their interactions. The whole works as a picture emerging from a jigsaw puzzle. Emergence and hierarchy. If A, B and C form a system and that system can be described as X, uh, and X has persistent properties, capabilities and behaviours, similarly Y, in describing Z we only need the PCBs of X and Y. We do not need to know about A, B and C or about D, E and F. We describe the PCBs, properties, capabilities and behaviour, of alpha as emergent because they're not attributable exclusively to A, B or C. We describe hierarchy levels by emergence. If A, B and C are at hierarchy level naught, then alpha and beta are at hierarchy level plus one, and gamma is at hierarchy level plus two. For instance, when thinking about communications, no need to consider radio components i.e. the complexity is hidden or encapsulated. So you can see here what A, B and C are, power amplifiers, pre-amplifiers, transmitted modules and so forth. But you can cover them up and say that's a receiver, that's a transmitter, or you can cover that up and say that's a radio, or you can think about intercoms and antennas and the whole thing then becomes communications. The complexity is encapsulated. And you can see this in the first systems model which shows a system of interest at right containing interconnections in a subsystem with sibling systems all in a containing system. Systems are dynamic. They're changing continually, even when made from fixed and hard technology. In, a, in operation, systems age as interacting systems are introduced with new technologies and capabilities. In concept, design and development, systems change constantly. All systems are in a continual state of change, some slowly, some faster, but all are in flux, even those that are simply ageing. Now, whole system principles, the Ohm's law of systems. The properties, capabilities and behaviour of a system derive from its parts, from interactions between those parts, and from interactions with other systems. And the corollary. Altering the properties, capabilities or behaviours of any of the parts or any of their interactions affects other parts, the whole system and interacting systems. Gen. This is important. And there are seven ages of system, analogous to the seven ages of life. Conception, design, creation, transition to use, 
usage, of course. Senility, and finally, replacement. Each age is the product of the previous ages. Success depends fundamentally on proper conception and design for all successive ages. A system is for life, not just for profit. There's a second system model, showing it now as an open system. It has physical properties, capacity, order and entropy, energy, structure and information. And of course it has flow through. It's an inflow and an outflow, even though it's an, uh, a system, it's still open. And you see a, a second system model of a number of systems interacting, nesting, recursion. Complex behaviour comes from coupling between systems. This is the basis of the three-body problem. And the three-body problem can lead, as we know, to chaos. As the coupling increases, you go from simple oscillatory behaviour into progressively more agitated, complex behaviour and finally instability. Systems architecture is not the same as hierarchy. Architecture is the pattering of clustering and linking of parts. It's systemic, it's irreducible. irreducible. It connects, isolates, provides structure, performance. For a human, the basic architecture is the skeleton. For an information system, architecture refers to the geographic or physical layout. That's all there is to it. Strict observance of particularly the corollary of the first principle to process as well as to product and you will find yourself taking a systems approach systems thinking, and even systems engineering. What are the fundamentals? We talk about the what and the how later. There's a five-layer model of systems engineering. Product systems engineering, project systems engineering, business systems engineering, industry systems engineering, and finally socio-economic systems engineering. There's the two systems concept. Systems engineering creates two systems, a process system to create the product and a product system to be delivered to customers. The process system has priority because the right process will produce the right product. Systems engineering is essentially about creating and executing the right process. Goals, objectives and targets or GOTS. The diagram is hopefully self-explanatory. The simpler version of what, what's going on, systems engineering in service. We have operation, then upgrade, and the upgrade leads to conception, definition, design, parts development, integration, test proving, installation, commissioning. Upgrade follows upon upgrade until finally one has to replace. It's business systems engineering. You can see a flow from left to right along the bottom. And then first tier suppliers in grey, the lead business in blue, and you can see the project systems engineering in a more detailed level with subsystems engineering. That rather tends to put things together. Now here's a view of industry level, and this is the Japanese approach, which is done in a somewhat circular fashion, with components of the system flowing clockwise and money flowing anti-clockwise. We can add on repairs and 
despairs and market obsolescence and failures and the circle evolves to be more efficient over time using Kaizen. Future metrics, product utility divided by environmental impact and energy consumption and dissipation around the loop. The whole represents agile lean volume su supply systems. Very successful. And here at the top level, a generic socio-economic system. You can see on the leading diagonals we have raw materials, manufacturing, service industries, society and farming industries. You can see all of the things each gives to the other. The whole can be self-sustaining. Systems engineering fundamentals. The how. The art and science of creating systems. The goal of systems engineering is optimization or producing the best, balancing the parts of whole processes and parts of whole product over the whole lifetime. The method of systems engineering is synthesis. The enemy of systems engineering is Cartesian reductionism. Reduction separates a system into parts and treats each part independently. Optimizing separate parts does not optimize the whole. Most current approaches to systems engineering Reduce the process to separate phases, product to separate parts, functions to separate subfunctions. So not really synthesis at all. Reduction and seeks to explain the whole by describing the properties and behaviours of the parts. Try explaining a tornado by describing the properties and behaviour of a water molecule. Use elaboration instead of reduction. Why do we argue? Why do we elaborate? It's impossible to decompose architecture into disconnecting parts. Architecture is systemic, or so people de <coughs> describe it as. Like considering capillaries in the leg are somewhat independent of veins, arteries, hearts and lungs. Any system has only one architecture at ground level. Elaboration is the reverse of encapsulation. Systems engineering is, many things, a problem-solving paradigm, creative and innovative, a way of managing complexity and risk, how to find an optimum solution, where optimum might mean less value for money, shortest time to minimum risk, minimum minimizing life cycles. It can also mean optimum performance in context, Generally, than a means of finding optimum solutions to complex problems. The classic old style systems engineering paradigm define the problem space and then separately but in parallel conceive solution options and identify trade off criteria and then conduct a trade off. And from that, you develop strategies and plans to implement the preferred solution. Systems engineering paradigm need have nothing to do with engineering. Generating a wide variety of options ensures one should be optimal, one of them. Given effective trade-off and sufficient available knowledge, which you usually don't have. Whole system, whole life cycle avoids local optimum traps. No options trade off, no optimization, no systems engineering. Dynamic optimization, the figure represents a typical nesting view of systems within systems within systems. Suppose the right hand white system is to be optimized. then you can get all sorts of reverberations. Optimizing requires this dynamic view of the process and it's due for process as a system just as it is for product as a system. It follows there's no such thing as a standard SE process model. Detailed standards would increase risk, damage business advantage, kill creativity and innovation. 
Each process is tailored continually to suit business goals, customer and user needs. Nevertheless, you can use the generic SE process models as a starting template. Let's have a look at some. Here's one. Just follow the diagram as it goes from top left to bottom right. Applying the problem solving paradigm. Concept at the top, business at the top, in the middle rather, I beg your pardon, and project at the bottom. Preferred system options, system design, subsystems design. Test and integration of the whole. Proving. And finally, a problem solution with manufacturing and commissioning. Requirements seek to describe future vision. Then there's a much simpler approach, goal-oriented systems engineering, where you start with uh, a, a vision of the future, and that leads strategies to achieve the required emergent properties. And there's a view of impact of product on process, showing it's not quite as simple as it might first appear. Now a different approach, systems approach to total systems acquisition in aerospace. You can see lean volume supply circles over continental USA and the equivalents being built up over you know, the whole of Europe and Asia. They're in competition with aerospace customers from centre bottom uh, reaping the benefits. This is a dream, it's unlikely to happen. SC is the management of emergent properties. The real key is to work with emergent properties, properties, capabilities and behaviours. Systems engineering then identifies the requisite emergent properties, creates systems with them, adapts, enhances those EPs through life, it's a philosophy, a way of thinking, creative and innovative, even a way of life. Conclusion. Systems engineering is straightforward, logical and practical. As in other disciplines, perhaps those who make it seem difficult do not understand it themselves, or perhaps have a vested interest. Beware of those jumping on the bandwagon, convincing you that their tired old reductionist practices are really systems engineering all the time or that it's all just common sense. Apply the first principle and stick to your guns.